What is authoritarianism? How is it different from totalitarianism or dictatorship or any of the other terms that have been used to describe the concentration of absolute power in the hands of the very few? Welcome to what will be a multi-part series on the absolute basics of absolute power, starting with a history of authoritarianism. Like so many political science terms used today, authoritarianism was born out of the European context, specifically out of the rise of capitalism and the need to justify this extremely exploitative system. And like so many political science terms, authoritarianism is a rebranding of sorts rather than a new concept. In the 18th century, the terms used to describe unbridled government power were absolutism or despotism. And at a time of revolution and huge political overhaul, these terms were used to justify violent struggle against the regime in the name of liberty and freedom. But think about who ended up free or liberated. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, constitutional governments were being established and the state of law was considered the ultimate in political progress. Anything outside of this was defined as a dictatorship. Now, the state of law was not democratic, but it did offer stability, predictability and a growing sense of equality among some men. Now, predictability, stability are both good for business, as is equality for some men, but not others. So we can see that economic development, growth and business interests become defining features of what is considered progressive government. By the mid 20th century, the term totalitarianism had emerged to describe absolute power and the total mobilization of an entire population. But initially it was a positive self-declaration by wannabe totalitarian regimes like Spain, Italy, Germany. After the war, however, and the defeat of these totalitarian regimes, the term became shorthand for the bad guys. Authoritarianism then emerged to describe political systems which didn't quite demand the all-encompassing mass mobilization of totalitarianism, but which still weren't quite democratic. And again, the difference between democratic and totalitarian was often an economic distinction, rather than based on political institutions which emerged. Authoritarian regimes were often seen as unsuccessful or low-capacity totalitarian regimes, or they were seen as democratizing, so authoritarianism became the transit point between totalitarianism and democracy. Terms like authoritarianism have always been used to describe the opposite of what we consider ourselves to be. Absolutism was the opposite of freedom and liberty. The dictatorship was the opposite of the state of law. Totalitarianism was the opposite of the allies. Authoritarianism is the opposite of democracy. Now, this doesn't mean that the term is useless, but it does mean that we need to be aware of this bias when we're talking about authoritarianism. Especially when we consider that principles like protecting private property and business interests over the collective wants and needs of the people were literally built into the foundations of what is considered good, progressive, democratic governance. And who does that serve? 